A very, very good morning to everyone. True happiness comes from a sense of inner peace and contentment, which, in turn, must be achieved through the cultivation of altruism, of love and compassion, and elimination of ignorance, selfishness, and greed. No matter. No matter what part of the world we come from, we are all basically the same human beings. We all seek happiness and try to avoid suffering. We have the same basic human needs and concerns. Famous words spoken by one of the most enlightened, wise and compassionate personality of the world that the world has had the fortune to see and hear His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, Kundun, the precious <laughs> victor. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Thank you. You finished? I will. I will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Namaskar. On behalf of the KK Handik State Open University and Lawyers Bookstall Guwahati, it is my pride and absolute privilege to welcome you to this program where we have been blessed to be able to share space with the most revered soul, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. And I'm sure for most of us, this day will remain a cherished memory forever. So this is going to be long. Please be seated. Thank you. <laughs> Dear friends, Krishna Kanto Handik State Open University and Lawyers Bookstall Guwahati has joined hands to organize this program this morning where His Holiness's first autobiography and published work, My Land and My People, first published in 1962 and translated into many Indian and European languages, will be unveiled in its Assamese translated version, Murdeh Aramur Manhu, Punnatma Dalai Lama Atmojibani, by His Holiness. Thereafter, we will be treated to the lecture on ancient Indian knowledge in modern times, which will, of course, be delivered by His Holiness. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I share with you that Krishna Kanto Hendrick State Open University, which was established in 2005, has as its mission to promote education to reach the unriched through the open and distance learning system. And the motto of the university is education beyond barriers of age, academic background, and geographical boundaries. The university, since its inception, has tried to bring about an all-round development of academicians, learners, and non-academic staff of the university by organizing various workshops, seminars, and the likes. This is the second time that the university has been successful in bringing a Nobel laureate to Guwahati, the previous personality being Sri Kailash Satyarthi, who graced the KK Handik Memorial Lecture as a speaker in 2015. And now about Lawyer's Bookstall, such a dear and familiar name for all of us Guwahatians. Lawyer's Bookstall has been a part of every student who has grown up and studied in Guwahati. One of the best in the business, this publication house celebrates 75 years of its official inception this year. And how better to celebrate this occasion than being blessed by His Holiness himself. And now, without further ado, I would like to move on to the felicitation program. And with our honored guest on the stage seated, I cannot help myself but say Heb Bar Ka Sushu to His Holiness and Shok Badalek. We now have the felicitation ceremony where His Holiness will be felicitated with a gamusa, a selling sador, an airy sador, and a bouquet of flowers. The felicitation will be done by Dr. Hites Deka, the Vice Chancellor of the KK Handik State Open University. The selling sador.
and Eri Sador for his holiness and of course a bouquet of flowers. We also have a citation. What an honor for our Vice Chancellor, sir. We also have a citation which will be presented to His Holiness, <laughs> the Dean Academic and Registrar in charge of KK Handic State Open University, receiving the blessings of His Holiness. A citation being presented by the Vice Chancellor of KK Handic State Open University, along with a book. to His Holiness. And we have a painting which will be presented to His Holiness by our Vice Chancellor. A beautiful painting. And now uh, from the Guwahati University, felicitation will be done by Dr. S. K. Nath, the Registrar of Guwahati University. A selling Sador and we have the GS of the Postgraduate Students Union of uh, Guwahati University, Motiu Rahman presenting a memento and with the felicitation ceremony done may I now welcome the of course a gamusa from the students union from the postgraduate students union and may I now request the vice chancellor of KK Handic State Open University Dr. Hitesh Deka to please present the welcome address good morning most respected His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, Mr. Jotin Hazurika, Chairman of Lawrence Books Foundation, our Register in Charge, Dr. Arup Jyoti Choudhury, members of the Board of Management of our University, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen, press and student friends. It is a proud privilege for all of us present here to be blessed by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. His Holiness the Dalai Lama is an institution that bridges our cultural past with our contemporary realities. Your presence amidst us shows your deep admiration for this part of the country. You are a living symbol of peace, benevolence and tolerance. Your famous pronouncement, my religion is very simple, my religion is kindness, paves a strikingly original and effective way for our troubled student society. Your inspirational speeches across the globe motivate millions of human beings and they being together changes for bright and promising future. With your rare wisdom and carefully chosen diction, you have shown us a truly positive attitude towards others, thereby designing an alternative framework for life. You have, a, you have in you the rarest light that may build an original path for us. We are ordinary mortals. It is indeed a rare moment for all of us present here to be enlightened by your holy wisdom and inner kindness. For you, Nonviolence is the supreme virtue. A desire to create a feeling of universal brotherhood among all the nations of the world must be the ultimate goal of the leaders, thinkers, activists, and moralists. You provide the most telling argument for the validity of the spiritual and ethical view of life. You are the living epitome of the lives of the liberated. Among you, the young and nascent minds, you have a special place. Your journey of life, the wisdom that you have inherited, and your way of handling various aspects have motivated others 
to integrate humanistic, scientific, and spiritual realizations in a creative way. It allows us others to attain a higher mood of consciousness, thereby allowing them to experience newer forms of realities. We are here to listen to you. We are here to bless by your holy wisdom and rare kindness. The August gathering is really grateful to you for your holy presence. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. May I now call upon Bhaskar Dr. Borua, proprietor of Lawyer's Bookstall, Guwahati, to please step forward and make a formal introduction of His Holiness and the book, Murdeh Aru Murmanhu, which is the Asmi's translation of the first autobiography of His Holiness, My Land and My People. Bhaskar. Respected dignitaries on the dais and esteemed members of the audience, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, Your Holiness, I hope you have had a great morning and the wet climate of Guwahati has been treating you well. Um, first of all, a simple word of gratitude is simply not enough uh, to express our feelings, you know, for, at today, for your presence today. I really thank you a lot, but it is not enough for, your, uh, for the moral support that you've been providing to the House of LBS since your first public event in Guwahati in 2014. Thank you so much, Your Holiness. Uh, today I've been given the difficult trust task of introducing you, uh, introducing you to the gathering here. So please forgive me if I make any mistakes. Uh, I never prepared a speech in my life, but today out of nervousness I have. Uh, difficult, ladies and gentlemen, it is to introduce His Holiness because he is not just any other person, but the collective spirit of a large section of mankind across the world, a section that wants peace and harmony, that wants to coexist with their brethren across religion and caste, wants moral and practical education for their children, and demands a clean earth. As I stand here today, I'm struggling to introduce in five minutes the one person who single-handedly represents all these human aspirations. Can I please request you to give one more standing ovation to His Holiness? <laughs> Thank you so much. I want you all to note just one small thing. While until very recently, His Holiness was usually introduced by the title, the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet, Today, the world simply introduces him as the 14th Dalai Lama or just the Dalai Lama, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. This little change in the form of address demonstrates the fact that His Holiness is regarded by all citizens across the world as a citizen and as their spiritual and moral mentor across nations. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, His Holiness does not only belong to Tibetans, now he belongs to all of us. Tibet's misfortune pains all persons with even the slightest hint of humanity, humanity within them. But ironically, this misfortune somehow acted as a catalyst in reigniting the messages of the great masters of Nalanda that were meticulated, uh, meticulously translated in Tibet from Sanskrit to Bhoti. The decimation of Tibetan culture in its originality paved the way for the same to spread across the world through the Tibetans in exile led by His Holiness himself. He calls himself a simple Buddhist monk and considers himself to be a spiritual son of India. He has spread ancient Indian wisdom in his writings and lectures time and again. And it is a great moment today that His Holiness is himself releasing the Assamese translation of his first autobiography in a program organized by a publishing house with one university in the campus of another uni Assamese university. So it is quite a wedding of sorts, you know, quite, uh, I mean, I think it's a pretty interesting and proud moment. The book is a window to the life of Tibet, the struggle of the Tibetans, and contains an overview of Shakyamuni Buddha's fundamental teachings. It has been many centuries since the great Buddhist master's writings have been available in Assamese, and this book is a step towards filling that gap. Your Holiness, as you might be knowing, pre-independence Eastern India and Kamarupa, where we are standing today, is the land of several Buddhist ma Mahasiddhas, including Naropa, whose spiritual lineage strengthened the foundation of Buddhism in Tibet. Naropa hailed from Eastern India, a part which is now in Bangladesh. Assam is the land of Mahasiddha Luipa, the author of the Charyapad verses. Atisha Dipankara Srigyano, a big name in Buddhism, especially in Tibet one of the earliest propagators of Buddhism in Tibet, hailed from a town which is now in Bangladesh. So we have a big heritage, Your Holiness. 
I shall not undermine His Holiness's stature by reading his bio data aloud, but I would like to sum up his persona and end my boring speech with a small poem, a persona which all men need to try and emulate in order to salvage humanity. The poem, The Dalai Lama and History, by Kannara poet U. R. Anantamurti, beautifully eulogizes His Holiness's calm mind and kind heart. Coincidentally, it can also be a poetic expression of the book that we are releasing today. Talking about the recent misfortunes of his country, absorbed, concerned, but still with a smile, the Dalai Lama one day in Delhi spotted on his ochre shawl a black ant. The soft-spoken sannyasi stopped, very carefully lifted the ant with his fingertips, left it on the table to crawl away and continued speaking, still smiling. It appears the Chinese have won now, but the Dalai Lama still waits in time's vast momentariness and in its infiniteness for truth to triumph. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bhaskar, for sharing all that with us. And now, as we move on with our program, we have the release of the book. But before that, may I call upon the translator of the book, Ms. Indrani Loskar, to please join us on the days for the book unveiling. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a proud moment for me to introduce my childhood friend and classmate, Indrani Loskar, before this August gathering today. Indrani Loskar, translator of the book, has been writing poems, short stories, articles in Assamese and English since her school days. She's a senior officer of the Assam Civil Service and has about nine books to her credit. Indrani has also translated various other books like Kafka Diary and Kafka's Letter to Her Father and Jhumpa Lahari's Lowland into Assamese. She has also translated Nobin Borwa's trend-setting book Cotton College from Assamese to English and also Assamese short stories to English published in a collection entitled Inner Space. Not just that, her original works include Rong Birong Hyal or Kotha, a collection of fables for children, Jibon Bisitro, which is a collection of published articles dealing with the prism of life, Kitab.com, a collection of many analytical essays on 15 books and authors, especially of the third world, and also Parallel Lines, which is a collection of 30 English poems. She is passionate about traveling. Indrani's other interests include music, theater, and films, and she is also associated with the social cause for the elderly people and their health needs. And this moment today, I'm sure, is the brightest feather in her plume. Our heartiest congratulations from everyone, Indrani. We wish you all the very best for your future ventures. May I now humbly request His Holiness to please step forward for the unveiling of the book, Mur Dekh Aramur Manu, Punnatma Dalai Lamar Atma Jiboni. We have the unveiling, and His Holiness will be accompanied by the other dignitaries on the dais, including Dr. Hitesh Deka, Dr. Orujyoti Choudhury, and Sri Jyotin Hajarika. What a wonderful moment to write a book, translate it rather, and then to be blessed by His Holiness Himself. A beautiful Kodak moment there. And to commemorate Blessings from His Holiness to Indrani. <laughs> How sweet is that? <laughs> and to commemorate this uh, book release, um, Sri Jyotin Hajarika and Bhaskar Dr. Borwa will now present a special memento on behalf of a Lawyer's Bookstall to His Holiness. Ladies and gentlemen, with us on the dais, Sri Jyotin Hajarika, who is a retired 
senior government official and uh, as of now he's the chairman of the Lawyers Bookstall Foundation which is the philanthropic wing of uh, Lawyers Bookstall. Ladies and gentlemen, with the unveiling of the book complete, now the moment that we have been waiting for to listen to the benign soul, His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, deliver his talk on ancient Indian knowledge in modern times. With great humility, may I invite His Holiness to please step forward to the podium and enlighten us with his thoughts and views. Respected elder brothers, and the sisters, and rest of the brothers, sisters. I always start my talk, uh, use the word brothers, uh, address your uh, brothers, sisters. I think two reasons. Uh, it's uh, difficult to mention each individual's names and uh, ranks like that, quite long. <laughs> uh, so sometimes, you see, uh, they cannot you know, so they remember. And the reading, also I don't like. <laughs> then, secondly, I really believe now we must sort of what's it, promote sense of oneness of humanity. So with that sort of what's it, the, uh, point, entire seven billion human beings are actually our brothers and sisters. If you accept Creator, then particularly uh, Creator generally speaking, like God, uh, is our Father. All seven billion human beings created by one God. Then, from the non-theistic religious tradition, not only all human beings, but also entire sentient being. Uh, each have the feeling of self. And mind or consciousness. With that feeling of pains and pleasure, neutral, always there. So the feeling of self and the feeling of pains and pleasure by nature, desire, you see, want more pleasure, happiness, joyfulness. And any sentient being who wants happiness, joyfulness, logically, no one wants problem, suffering. So, entire sentient being and particularly 7 billion human beings on this planet, physically, mentally, emotionally, same. And all have the, this desire, and because of that, we all have a right to achieve happy life, joyful life. However, many problems which we are humanity facing is essentially our own creation. Nobody wants a problem, but a lot of problems uh, our own creation. Why? Now in the level of emotion. Emotion, there are so different sort of nature of emotion. Some emotion, tremendous love, Tremendous affection. Uh, that kind of strong feeling, a kind of emotion. But such things are positive. 
then anger, hatred. Uh, these also, I mean, these emotions, you see, uh, once that emotion develops, I think even animal, we can see their attitude become different. Then particularly we human beings, uh, when we talk with another human being, and then some, then some subject, you see, the other, other person, you see, feel a little uncomfortable. When that sort of uh, topic comes, the immediately their face change. So, these sort of uh, emotion, which essentially very much, firstly, I think a self-centered attitude with a combination of compassion, all right, good. Compassion there, self-confidence there. Uh, self-confidence automatically reduces fear. When fear reduces, we can develop trust. Other hand, the self-centered attitude combined with some kind of negative emotion. Then, uh, distrust, suspicion. And actually, the, also the anger brings some kind of extra energy but energy, that energy is blind energy. So sometimes you see people who dare to use certain words, but when that person becomes angry, angry, and then no hesitate to use because of the negative word. So it seems you see, anger brings some kind of, because of the uh, energy, extra energy or boldness. But that actually blind energy because all destructive emotion, no proper logical background. The positive emotion, there is sufficient logic. So these emotion, I think mostly the Spontaneous way. Spontaneous sort of develop, developing emotion. Most case, no proper reason. So therefore, if you uh, investigate why I feel angry, why that person or that thing is bad, further investi investigate, not much solid reason. So most of destructive emotion is spontaneous. On the other hand, positive emotion, constructive emotion, there is a solid basis because of the reasons. So through meditation, through analytical meditation, we can increase these positive emotion. The negative emotion spontaneously come. But since you see no proper reason, so no solid basis. So these, you see, I feel nothing to do with religion. Uh, but you see, if we properly use our intelligence, then you can develop conviction or Loving kindness or karuna, these are very, very helpful, useful. And anger, hatred, these are very bad, harmful. Even the physical level, physical health, constant anger, hatred, actually eating our immune system. That's now according the scientific finding. Other hand, compassion, 
brings inner strength. Inner strength reduces anxiety or stress. So therefore, the practice of more experience of compassion is very good for our health. And then another thing, when spontaneous certain emotion comes, at that moment, our human intelligence cannot function properly. Therefore, the, when destructive emotion develop, the, it immediately develop short-sighted, narrow-minded. When anger develop, you need some kind of independent target. Then you feel angry. Oh, yes. Then try to analyze, try to think more deeper way. Why I feel angry with that person or that thing? Not sort of a sufficient reason. It appears to me very bad. And he or she criticized me at a negative attitude. Then you further ask, oh, since childhood, that person is really uh, negative towards you or not? No. Or this negative attitude remain forever? No. Due to certain circumstances, there are different attitudes come. That attitude, not from birth, but because of certain factor. So once you see, you understand many elements which creates angry or anger in that person, including your own attitude. So then, anger no longer find independent, absolute target. One of my friend, an American a scientist, uh, when I met him, his age, 84 year old, not religious minded person. Uh, he, some I think they, psychiatrist. psychiatrist, no. I think a few decades he deal or helping people who have a lot of disturbances due to anger. So, the, he told me when person but develop anger, the person or the thing which you feel anger, angry, that appears very negative. But actually, 90% of that negativeness is the angry person's own mental projection. This is exactly uh, one of uh, Buddhist psychologist, ancient Buddhist psychologist, Buddhist philosophy and psychologist, like Nagarjuna, he clearly mentioned that. So when I heard that old scientist sort of explanation on the basis of his own sort of investigation or experience, uh, I found, oh, the Nagarjuna sort of view about anger is very similar, like that. So therefore, on uh, the other hand, more compassionate mind. You see, there's sufficient reasons, uh, particularly we human beings, we are social animals. 